We have a signal now for when I'm needed. But when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call, it's a warning to them. After the massive success of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, fans were eagerly awaiting the next Batman solo film. Initially, Ben Affleck was working on his own version of the film, but due to many personal issues and career setbacks, he would ultimately drop out of the film, leaving Matt Reeves to take over. Reeves now had the responsibility to formulate a brand new Batman universe, which means a new Batsuit, Batmobile, Gotham City, and a series of character designs and props. Let's take a look at the early development of the Batman to see everything that was cut from early production. What I'm doing is my family's legacy. If I can't change things here, if I can't have an effect, I don't care what happens to me. Good evening viewers, this is Warping Fist speaking and I've been trying to reach you about subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Anyways, let's get started. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Murder, robberies, assault. Two years later, they're all up. And now this. The city's eating itself. Maybe it's beyond saving. But I have to try. When writing The Batman, Gotham City was the most important element of Matt Reeves' Batman universe, as the Batman story was really about Gotham and its history of corruption and how it shaped its protagonist and villain. Reeves wanted Gotham City to be a plausible location, but also unrecognizable at the same time. He wanted to craft a city that was trapped in time, slowly deteriorating by the years of corruption. Gotham is a living memory, one that shows its affluent past, but also its decaying present. This is a city that attempted to modernize their gothic roots and architecture. However, due to massive corruption, funds that were meant to improve the city into a new age were funneled into drugs and crime. As a result, the city is incomplete. Modern technologies and architecture are built upon the gothic foundations and many skyscrapers are left abandoned and incomplete, a living reminder of the city's failing to its citizens. While this is a very unique interpretation of Gotham City, they approached the look of Gotham very differently early on. As you can see, Gotham is significantly more, you know, gothic. There's less of a presence of modern technologies. Instead, Gotham fully appears like it's halted in its development, now appearing like a gothic nightmare. In fact, this interpretation of Gotham City almost makes it appear like some kind of post-apocalyptic world. There's a sense of dread within these illustrations, like Gotham is a world devoid of hope, fully shrouded by misery and corruption. There's also a thick fog enveloping the city, shrouding and concealing it from the outside world, making Gotham an isolated gothic metropolis. The only signs of life within this desolate city being the lights that cut through the fog, the only remnant of a society within the concealing mist. Get out of here, freak. You hear me? That little suit's gonna get all full of blood. Mine are yours. When creating a Batman film, the Batsuit is often the most important visual element, so you have to get it right. Now most depictions of the Batsuit are often tactical fabric, with layers of armor on limited sections of the suit. It's a very simple, yet iconic design that leaves room for many unique redesigns and interpretations. The bad suit in Matt Reeves' Batman was designed to work within a grounded and realistic universe. Reeves wanted the suit to appear handmade by Bruce himself. The materials used to create the suit for the purpose of practicality, elements like the cowl, were also carefully designed. The production team purposely designed the cowl to resemble a skull, 
in its overall design, especially when it came to the nose piece. There were other carefully crafted elements of the suit, and overall, they were all meant to come together to have the suit appear very tactical, militaristic, and something akin to riot gear. It was also meant to appear like a prototype, a suit that would evolve in future films. Bruce Wayne in this story was like a recluse who's in this decaying Wayne Manor. So he's down below and he's making this suit. It's his willingness to endure anything in order to do what he thinks needs to be done. And so this suit is very tactical. At first, when they were designing the bat suit, they weren't entirely sure on how it would look. Due to this, the bat suit was mainly cloaked in shadow, and we never got a good look at the design. However, in later concepts, we begin to see elements of the suit take shape. While minimal, the art gives us a very good idea on the creative direction of this suit. This was a costume that was very tactical and gave the impression that it was put together using existing military, police riot gear, and other tactical equipment. This is made evident through the exposed knuckles and fingers on Batman's gloves. The large, torn cape, which helps the suit appear more put together and actually has Batman appear a bit more scary. The final element that enhances the put together feel even more is the armor plating sparingly placed on different parts of Batman's body. However, it's not the armor plating that's the most interesting. The most interesting element is how these armor platings are held together. It appears as if Batman taped bits of the armor onto the fabric and also uses many straps to reinforce it even more. You can even see bits of Bruce Wayne's skin through this hardcore DIY bat suit, which is a very intriguing creative idea. These concepts represent the perfect mix of grounded practicality while still staying true to the character's comic look. There were other pieces of concept art for Batman's early bat suits. However, one thing you'll notice is that we never have a good look on how the suit appears in detail. Batman either has his back turned, concealing most of the suit, or the suit itself is covered by a large enveloping cape. Again, these concepts were likely made when the artist did not have a good idea on how Batman looked like, and the large cape helped avoid drawing Batman in detail. Some concepts did show Batman's suit in a full frontal shot. As you can see, the suit is all black, and the cowl is a lot more traditional. In fact, the suit is so dark that even the bat symbol blends in. This is a costume that's really reminiscent to the Nolan Batman costumes. However, I believe that this suit was just a placeholder suit that was used in environmental illustrations and was never actually considered for the film. After a few more concept arts, the bat suit's overall design would slowly evolve and become more clear and eventually would result in this concept for the bat suit. Now this suit is not drastically different from what we see in the final film, but there are some notable differences. Instead of fabric layered with body armor, this bat suit is instead tactical fabric akin to Kevlar. When it comes to the cowl, the ears are much shorter and thicker. When it comes to the biggest difference with this suit, the bat logo is the most noticeable. It looks completely different from the one we see in the film. The logo looks very similar to the one we see in Batman Noel, which was rumored to be a design influence for the suit. Now this bat suit must have been very popular, as we can see it in four different pieces of concept art, which allows us to see every corner of this suit. One interesting element about this bat suit is actually the grapple gun as it shoots out from the top of its gauntlets. This is actually significantly different from the one in the film inspired by Travis Bickle's hidden gun from Taxi Driver. In the Batman, the grapple gun extends from Batman's wrist, allowing Batman to have quick access to his grapple gun. It's unclear why they never used this suit in the film but it was likely due to practicality. Sure, the tactical fabric is great, but when compared to bulletproof armor, the final design just cannot be beat. What's interesting is that this suit was featured in the Riddler Year One spin-off comic, implying that this iteration of the bat suit was worn during Batman's first year, but was later upgraded to something more protective. 
there was tiny amounts of other concept arts for Batman, but as you can see, they look almost identical to the final suit design and only really have tiny amounts of differences. The alternate bat symbol we see in the alternate suit designs is not the only bat symbol that was played around with. These bat symbols ranged from thinner designs to ones that were a lot thicker. One fun fact about some of these bat symbols is that they were meant to look like a bat in midair, flying straight towards or away from the camera. In the end, the 22nd bat symbol was the favorite among the production team and luckily for them, Matt Reeves also really loved the look. Since the Batman existed within a grounded world, Matt Reeves wanted to ground many aspects of the character, especially how Batman glides. It was important that the audience could feasibly believe that he could exist within the world. Reeves felt that the traditional way Batman glided in the comics and other media just did not work for his iteration as it felt impractical and too advanced for the story he was telling. Due to this, he began to look at more practical ways Batman could glide. Reeves decided that a wingsuit made the most sense as it was both practical and accessible to the general public. Although they ended up using a wingsuit in the final film, early on, the artist did experiment with a more traditional glider. As you can see, much like the Arkham games and a majority of Batman stories, Batman appeared to glide normally in the concept art. In the Batman, there were also many gadgets within the concept art that were not in the final film. The Batarangs, for example, are one of these gadgets. The design of these Batarangs look very similar to his Bat logo. According to the concept art, the Batarangs are still a prototype that Batman was still testing. There was also concept art for what appears to be nunchucks. The Bat Chucks are unique as we don't see Batman using weapons very often in pieces of media. It's understandable why these weren't in the film as Bat Chucks may have been overkill for the character to use. Batman also has another gadget that's present on his suit but never used in the film. This gadget is the sticky bomb launcher that's holstered on his right thigh. As the name suggests, it would have been a gun-like weapon that shot out circular sticky bombs. Not only is there concept art for this sticky bomb gun, but the prop was made for the film. However, in the actual film, the sticky bombs are present, but the gun is never used. In regards to the drifter look we see in the film, Reeves thought that it made sense for Bruce to use it while roaming the streets of Gotham. His bat suit is likely kept under his large jacket and his backpack likely contains his cape and cowl. This look was inspired by a similar outfit in Batman Year One and this can be seen in the concept art. As you can see, the drifter appearance doesn't really go through much variations in the art. When it comes to Bruce Wayne's other looks, you'll be interested to know the production team experimented with a more traditional and classy attire for Bruce Wayne when compared to the more emo vibe in the film. This look for Bruce Wayne is amazing and if you've seen some of Pattinson's films in the past, you'd know that he can easily pull off the playboy or businessman type look. They likely did not go with this design because it did not fit in with the reclusive nature of this version of Bruce Wayne. Most Batman films, the Batmobile is an indication of how the universe is like. Is it a fantastical and colorful world or maybe it's a grounded yet heightened world like Nolan's films. In Matt Reeves' Batman world, the Batmobile very much reflects the type of universe it exists in. The Batmobile is a modified muscle car made to prioritize speed and power. It looks very intimidating but it's also very functional and built for pursuits. Much like how Batman's suit is still in the middle of evolving, the same can be said for this Batmobile. As you can see exposed parts at the back, this is a vehicle that Bruce Wayne built himself using existing materials. As a result, it perfectly fits in with this grounded universe Matt Reeves envisioned. 
From the very start of this film's development, Reeves always wanted the Batmobile to be a modified car, especially one that resembled a classic American muscle car. He loved the idea of Bruce Wayne in a cluttered garage, assembling his Batmobile from scratch. With the help of several vehicle designers, they would begin putting together a series of concept art. Matt Reeves' envisioning of the Batmobile was very clear from the start, so it was a matter of figuring out how a vehicle like this would exactly look like. These early depictions of the Batmobile are very simple for anyone who looks at them. There is not a huge amount of detail on these vehicles. Unlike the intimidating final design, these Batmobiles look a lot more friendly the addition of the blue headlights also make this Batmobile look more approachable. This concept sketch of the Batmobile embodies this the most. At first glance, it appears like a futuristic sports car and overall appears like something a rich person would drive. To keep in line with the put together and grounded design Matt Reeves wanted for the Batmobile, many of the illustrations do have the Batmobile appear very put together. As you can see, the backside of this Batmobile is exposed, revealing all the car's inner components. It's like Bruce Wayne was in a rush to use the Batmobile and failed to conceal crucial elements of the vehicle. Overall, these very early depictions of the Batmobile look unique, but the production team eventually decided to go with a different design. However, elements of this Batmobile would be brought over to future versions. The general design of the Batmobile had already been decided by this point, which allowed the vehicle artists to be inventive and play around with the look. The Batmobile in these concepts appears like something built for speed, especially when you see the sleeker appearance. Despite this, other Batmobiles still embraced a more aggressive and angry appearance and some concepts even have the Batmobile appear more armored, such as this concept, which looks more protective than most of the other Batmobiles we've seen. These aggressive and angry design approaches to the Batmobile would be carried over to a series of other concept art. We only see the front of these Batmobiles, but the little we do see radiate a sense of speed, power, and relentless aggression. These very much fit in with the grounded and dark world of Matt Reeves' Batman and is the perfect embodiment of vengeance and would scare any criminal that was unlucky enough to be in its path. Despite the approach of having the Batmobile look more realistic, that does not stop some artists from being very creative with the design. This Batmobile, for example, looks very creative. The front wheels look almost identical to Nolan's tumbler, down to the double wheels at the front and the way they attach to the vehicle. Eventually, these concept arts would evolve and become this concept you see here. This Batmobile represents one of the final designs and would undergo several tweaks once again until it became the Batmobile we see here. Hey guys. Thanks for all the comments and uh, a special thanks to everyone for the tips on detonators. When designing the Riddler, Matt Reeves wanted something different from every other Riddler of the past. Riddler is a character who's had many different designs over the years and some are more inventive than others. Paul Dano's version is one of the most creative. Early on, Reeves took inspiration from the Zodiac Killer when it comes to the design. He wanted his suit to look grounded and appear like something anyone could put together. The Zodiac influence is even more apparent in the concept art. The logos are ripped straight from the bullseye design but with a question mark in the center. It seems like this was the general look they were going for from the very start as there aren't many drastic differences in each piece of concept art when compared to the final look. However, before Matt Reeves fully had an idea on how Riddler would look like in the film, the concept art depicted him cloaked in shadow. He seems to be wearing a normal green hoodie, perhaps implying that early on, Riddler was more like a figure hidden in the shadows and did not have a distinct look. This other concept shows a more gentleman and Giga Chad appearing Riddler as he sits calmly in a coffee shop with a smile on his face. Additionally, in the Batman's Lego sets, you'll notice that Riddler has his hair exposed while wearing his mask. This is much different from the actual film, 
where Riddler's hair is covered by plastic wrap. Holy God, what are you this showing me? His head. Come on! Open your eyes! The Batman took heavy influence from many noir films from the past in order to craft the visuals of the film. This is especially true for Colin Farrell's Penguin. In the film, Oz has a very distinct appearance that's easily recognizable. However, there's a chance we could have had something drastically different. When they were first designing the Penguin, Matt took influence from characters like Scarface and Frito from Godfather. Reeves wanted to formulate a more realistic depiction of the character, a little less over the top but still recognizable as the Penguin. Matt looked at Frito as a blueprint for how the character would look like. After meeting with Colin Farrell for the role, Matt noticed that Colin had gained a bit of weight from his latest role in The Gentleman. Reeves thought that Colin had the perfect body type and acting skill to portray his iteration of the Penguin, one that was a bit more grounded and not as large as he is usually depicted. When you take a look at the early concept art, you'll notice that Penguin is a lot slimmer than we're used to. Now this is not the first time we've seen a skinny penguin on screen, as he appears this way in both the Telltale Batman series and the Gotham TV show. Penguin in these concepts is a lot more intimidating. In fact, it's to the degree where you can't understand why someone like this would be treated like a joke. Penguin looks like a man of great ambition, and with his expensive attire, cigar, and jewelry. This is a man of both great wealth and one who pursues material value. Only two pieces of concept art give Penguin a large body type, but even then, he still looks a bit more intimidating. Now these concepts represent how Colin Farrell's Penguin originally looked like. However, when Matt Reeves hired prosthetics designer Mike Marino, Penguin's overall design would change dramatically. Marino would send Matt a photo of a sculpture he created for the Penguin. When Matt first received these images, he was amused but apprehensive. Matt believed that giving Penguin heavy prosthetics just did not work as he thought that Colin Farrell's performance would be lost through all the makeup. However, through some convincing, Matt in the end agreed to give Penguin these prosthetics resulting in the look we have in the film. Maybe we're not so different after all. When designing Catwoman, Matt Reeves wanted the costume to look like a sort of prototype suit. Since the movie takes place in her early years, Catwoman in this film is not Catwoman at this point in time. She's meant to eventually evolve into that mantle. You can see the beginnings of her character in the design of the mask, which has the shape of a cat mask. The concepts of Catwoman reinforce this prototype look even more, as most of them showcase her wearing a leather jacket and a black mask. One of the masks is straight up just a normal ski mask, showing how far Selina is from adopting her Catwoman mantle. One of the most elaborate scenes in the film was actually the Batman's chase sequence with the Penguin. Now the scene itself is pretty amazing, however, did you know it could have been way more ambitious, but was unfortunately toned down due to COVID-19 restrictions. According to these storyboards, there was a sequence where Batman and the Penguin enter a construction site. This site was full of workers and obstacles that would get in the way. Penguin would have no problem ramming his way through everything in his way, while Batman had to try his best to avoid crashing into any workers or objects. At some point, Penguin would crash into a floodlight, which in turn would crash into the Batmobile, potentially breaking the windshield on impact. The scene would end with Penguin entering a long narrow tunnel, with Batman right behind. The rest of the chase would have likely played out the same way in the film. I really love how chaotic and frantic the chase is, with Batman and Penguin having to avoid other cars, obstacles, construction workers, and trucks. The storyboards mention that this chase was meant to be filmed in Liverpool. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, the shoot in Liverpool was entirely scrapped and had to be filmed on a soundstage 
and on an airfield, resulting in the tunnel and construction site sequence being cut out. The inflating budget and health concerns due to COVID also forced the production to remove any extras that would have been involved. All this makes you wonder, how much did COVID affect the film and cause many scenes in the film to be less ambitious overall? The Batman's concept art also showcases different approaches to scenes in the film, such as this one, which shows Batman waiting within the alleyway to beat up the criminal we saw in the film, which may hint that Batman was indeed hiding within the shadows. The concept art also showcases a, a different approach to the train fight. Batman was meant to stalk this gang from the top of the train and eventually would reveal himself by walking down a flight of stairs. This one shows the bat signal on the rooftop of an abandoned building. The Riddler's hideout was meant to be an abandoned warehouse instead of an apartment building. This concept showcases Batman fighting a horde of bodyguards outside the Iceberg Lounge. It's sad that most of these concepts couldn't make it into the final film, but it's always nice to look back at the unused ideas and see the many directions this film could have went.